Eyes. Sight. Most people say it's the last sense they would want to lose. Sight. What would life be without it? No colors, no shapes, no beauty. Eyes. Without eyes, what can you see? Those with eyes can't imagine an eyeless world. And so it is the sight full that disable the sight less. I think the biggest problem with uh, the institutions is the, the imposition of limits, the pre presumption of limits on blind people. Um, we shouldn't be making those presumptions. People need to be free to find their own limits. I never thought I'd be living the life I'm living now when I woke up that morning and, and was blind. In hindsight now, life is far more riching in it and interesting that I've discovered echolocation because I'm actively living through the rest of my other senses. When I just had vision, I was only living through that one sense and kind of ignoring the rest of everything else. So now I spend all my time actively living in my other senses and, and just, you know, there's lots of interesting things to discover and, and to enjoy about life. We think that blind individuals learning literally to see can serve as an illustrative example to everyone that we all have, we all are faced, are challenged by blindness in our lives. Psychological blindness, social blindness, spiritual blindness. And we think that the most debilitating, the most dangerous form of blindness is blindness to our own blindness. My name is Bettina Delinsic, and I was born blind. Growing up blind, you weren't expected to, to do much. But I want to be expected to do what everybody else is expected to do. I've always loved athletics. I've always wanted to be part of a team. The only modification that's been made is in demonstrating how to do it. Back more, 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 more. So showing me exactly what the move looks like, instead of doing it visually, I do it tactily. It's not a matter of enjoying it more or less, it's about enjoying it differently. You know, it's, it, it's enjoying it through, through different vision, through another lens. Now, if blind people can learn to see in the dark, then it seems to me that surely sighted people can learn to see better in the light. It is said there's a right way and a wrong way to see because sight provides instantaneous access to reality. Instantaneous access to the known Navigating reality in a sightless world is like stepping into a foreign frontier for the sightful, frightening and destabilizing. This is what we think, and so this becomes reality. But maybe, maybe lack of sight opens a door to a world of emotions through energy and touch, breath and feel, body and sound, a sensorial revolution. Think about the freedoms, the freedom from the walls that your visual world builds, freedom from the gaze of the other that is often disabling. The gazer decides what the gazey becomes. Both may see, but the gaze renders one blind to reality. Without sight, the gaze doesn't exist. Communication of the souls reside. Without the gaze, without sight, the eyes turn inward to understand the self, the body, the environment. If you'd allow, maybe the sightless world could become colorful in other ways and other senses, an enhancement of touch, smell, proprioception, sound, who knows what the sightful are missing. Eyes, perception, sight, gaze, 
Even with functioning eyes, are you truly seeing? The eyes are thought to make our realities clearer, but the gaze paralyzes, transforms the abled to disabled. Lack of sight makes us think there's something wrong, but maybe the only wrong is our judgment of right and wrong. Maybe these sightless are not so disabled. Communication, movement, life, love can happen without the eyes, without the eyes that make our illusions stronger. Eyes, sight. Most people say it's the last sense they would want to lose. Sight. What would life be without it? No colors, no shapes, no beauty. Eyes. Without the eyes, what can you see? Those with eyes can't imagine an eyeless world. And so it is the sightful that disable the sightless.